Hi, in this video, I'm going to review this, the Canon 10 to 18 millimeter budget wide angle lens. Hi, I'm Adam and welcome to First Man Photography, the channel that will help you take your photography to the next level. If you haven't done so already, head over to firstmanphotography.com, fill in the details to join the email list and I'll send you a free copy of the ebook on how to capture perfect exposure every time. Okay, let's get into this. The fact that Canon has decided to make this is a great thing because it opens up ultra wide angle photography to a new audience with this budget lens. When you first strap an ultra wide angle lens to your camera, it's an exciting moment when you first look through the viewfinder and see the new perspective that it brings to the world. This Canon 10 to 18 millimeter lens really picks up nicely where the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens leaves off at the wide angle. It's the perfect accompaniment to that lens for your Canon EFS crop sensor camera. Now wide angle photography really opens up some creative possibilities in the realms of landscape photography where you might want a really nice wide perspective or architecture where you're in a tight space and you want to get that whole building in the scene, it's good for that. And it's also used by pretty much every estate agent going to make rooms when they're selling a house look bigger. On paper, this lens is excellent. It has that wide angle, it's relatively cheap, it's light, which I think is a good thing. It has a front element that doesn't rotate when you zoom or focus, which is a brilliant thing for when you're taking your landscape images and you want to attach something like a circular polarizer to the front because uh, you don't want that rotating. It has image stabilization, which is a good thing for video. And it also has the uh, Canon STM focus system, which on this lens is particularly good and it's absolutely silent. See, silent. So all in, is this the perfect lens? Um, no. In my written reviews over on my website, I give products that I review a star rating. And one of those star ratings is Joy Factor. It's designed to describe that feeling you get when you first use a new product. That fizz, the excitement, the desire to use it over and over again, and that unexplainable feeling that just makes you truly love a product. Now this lens does not have that. It's just a bit, ugh. Makes you want to throw it away and drop it on the floor. Hopefully it's not broken, because I use it for my vlogs if you haven't seen. It just leaves you feeling flat and the images it creates are just okay and nothing more. And the overall feeling is just eh. Other downsides of this lens include the plastic mount, which not everybody's gonna be happy with, the simply dreadful distortion that this lens produces, particularly when you're at 10 to 12 millimeters, because anything towards the edge of your frame is just gonna be skewed out of uh, sharp focus to the point where it just, just looks like your image is melted. The lens is also quite slow at between f4.5 and 5.6, and that adjusts as you zoom in and out, which can make exposure tricky in certain circumstances, particularly with video. I've also found the image stabilization not particularly useful. For stills, the image stabilization will let you get away with something like 1 20th of a second. That's partly because of the wide angle, but even so, the aperture is still going to be around 4.5 to 5.6, so that's still going to be quite dark in low light situations, which means you're still going to need quite a significant ISO boost. So it really isn't helping you out that much. As I mentioned, I've been using this lens in my vlogs, and if you haven't seen them yet, I've done two so far. Uh, I'll put a link up for you there and down in the description. Please check them out, and if you enjoy them, please do subscribe to the channel. What I've found is the type of movements that I'm making during the vlogs, the IS on this lens isn't helping me out one bit. If I'm walking around, it's sort of moving up and down a bit and it doesn't help that out. Uh, it does, the only time it does really sort of seem to help is when I'm sort of making very small movements in the camera. Um, if I'm trying to get a stationary shot and hand holding, it will smooth that out. But I really don't see that as a benefit over a wide angle lens that doesn't have um, image stabilization because in post you can remove it with some warp stabilization and I'm, it's really not getting me any better shots than I was getting when I was using a different wide angle lens that doesn't have IS. With all that being said, I'm not actually saying don't buy this lens because it can solve a number of problems that you may currently be faced with with your gear. And that's especially the case when you look at the price of about £180 in the UK and about $270 in the US 
for a new version. It will still do a job for you as it is for me with the vlogs, but I just think there are better options out there if you're in the market for a wide angle lens for your Canon EFS camera. The top choice would be the Canon 10 to 22 millimeter, which really is an L lens just without the red ring. It's very similar to the uh, Canon L lens 17 to 40 on a full frame and produces very similar image quality to that lens. The Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter is also another option that does also suffer from quite a bit of distortion, but on the second hand market, they can now be picked up extremely cheap. I would love to hear from you if you've been using this lens or what other ultra wide angle lens are you using and what kind of results are you getting? Please leave a comment down below I really appreciate that. Like I said, please subscribe to the channel where there's videos going up every Wednesday and every Sunday, and I think it can really help you out. I'll see you on another video very soon. I'm Adam. This is First Man Photography, out.